Hey, what's up y'all? It's Dr. Paul. Moving through the next steps on the conservation of this Superman number no. nine cover for Noah. I've had this cover in aqueous solution for most of the last four days. We've been doing four hours on with these blue LEDs. You can watch older videos on the channel for more information and there's links in the description to purchase your own, but basically these are 450 nanometer blue LEDs. They're very good for photo bleaching the whites without affecting the colors very much. I've been limiting the exposure to these to four hours a day. And then I've done four total changes of the aqueous solution. So you recall we're using the recipe of Guerra et al from 1995. It's procedure for simultaneous deacidification and sizing of paper from Restaurateur, uh, volume 16, pages 175 to 193. Basically, calcium hydroxide and methyl cellulose together with the photo bleaching. So let's have a look. And I have moved this around different angles to get the photo bleaching on different areas of the book. I've also moved this little envelope around that has our paper fragments in it that we recovered from the tape carrier. So I've been periodically moving this to different locations. Again, this light will actually penetrate the paper and it'll bleach the other side of the comic, even from this side. So I'm not worried about there being like a shadow, but just in case I move them around anyway, that gives these a little bit different light exposure too. The first change of water that I did off of here was very dark. We got a lot of dirt out of this paper. Um, it was almost the color of tea, frankly. I should have done a picture, but I was in a hurry and uh, wanted to make sure we moved this project along. Now, You'll note that we still see the red here, but I think that that's just because the page is wet. We won't know 100% until we dry it, but I think we're only seeing the red because the page is wet. I think once it dries, it won't be as translucent and we won't see this. And I think we knocked down that bleed through that we was one of our goals. We have significantly lighter paper. We're still preserved. Recall too that this is a layer of Holitex over our paper right now. So you're seeing it through Holitex. So we've preserved the blacks very well here while giving the whites a nice punch up. Now, I didn't wanna to go too white I never do, I don't want it to look artificial. And if you get too white, you're gonna start knocking your inks down as well. Also note, we have a stain up here. There's a stain here and a little bit of staining here. Could I take those further? Yes, I could, but we'll start to compromise between getting this white and preserving the black ink here or you know, same here or here. And even as I said, the ink on the other side of the page. So that light actually penetrates and we'll start to see a little bit of lightning here, but we'll see even more lightning on the other, well, not more, but we'll it'll be more noticeable because it's on the color, on the cover. We'll see whitening on the other side. Too much bleaching, I don't wanna knock those beautiful colors out, okay, any more than we need to. So this is now ready to start drying. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, pour this last bath off and then I'm going to set up this these pages in the Holitex with some paper towels and some weight. So I'm going to go pour this aqueous bath off and I'll bring it back and I'll show you the manipulations for the drying. It's going to be a little bit tricky because these two pages now that they're separated this is slightly larger than the piece of granite that I normally use. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is, while they're still wet, I'm gonna manipulate these a little bit and just get a little bit more of a gap 
and then I'll use two smaller pieces of, of granite to get the effect that I want and not worry about whether or not my granite is all the way to the edges on both sides of this cover. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, I've got the separation that I desired between these two pages and the envelope here is free as well with our fragments and it's all covered in holly text both sides so it's relatively safe to manipulate at the moment so the way that i achieved this actually is if you just take the top layer of holly text and roll it back and then you can you can just shift the tray and this one will float this one is still fixed because it's still between two layers of holly text and they're kind of um they just want to stick together. They're not sticky. They're, they just have surface interaction, which keeps them tight. This one will float till you get it where you want it. Then you roll the holly text back over. So I now have nice separation. Both pages are between holly text top and bottom. And I'm going to just dry them right here. So I'm going to set this aside, put some paper towels down, and we'll get started. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I am Dr. Paul Kosnick. I'm a biomedical engineer by training, comic book collector, conservator, aficionado by choice, and I like to share my passion for the hobby on the channel. If you enjoy this content, please give us a like, leave a comment, tell somebody about the channel, subscribe. It really helps us find new viewers, and I appreciate it very much. Helps us grow the community here. That was pretty easy, pretty drama free. You see how easy it is to manipulate the pages when they're in holly text top and bottom. I'm gonna try to just center this a tiny bit better so we get the best absorption we can. There we go. And we're gonna put some more on top. Now, I have these gradations on my workbench for a reason. And I have a line right here, part of it may be off camera. I know that that page is on that side of the line, this page is on this side of the line. So when I put weights, I'll use those as references and then I know where the edges are as well. I'm gonna police up some of this water on the edge so that we can absorb as much as we can out of the covers here. I've told you my basic drill on this before. What I will do is first pass, I usually go about 10 minutes and then I swap the paper towel. Next pass about 20 minutes. Next one about 40. Next one about two hours, hour and a half, two hours, something like that. The next one four and then eight hours. And I'll adjust that for, you know, nighttime and whatever else. But Basically, initially, you want to swap the paper towels very rapidly. You probably do the first swap out even faster than 10 minutes if you wanted to. But for me, it's just like a nice, easy progression. And then by the time you do that eight hour swap, you leave it for 24 hours. And then it should be dry and really nice and flat when you're done with that. All right. So here's granite countertop scrap piece that I cut and polished. Number one, right on that line. Here's my second piece of granite. Right. And then because we use the granite, we don't need any other weights. This seems to work out pretty well for me. And like I said, this is granite countertop left over from a project that uh, I just had to cut and polish. So it was free to me otherwise, other than a little bit of time. So next video, we will be seeing these pages, I think, pretty flat and dry and we'll reevaluate from there but if we're satisfied with the bleaching that we did we'll be using the owl card to 
see how many stages or how many steps, how much whiter it is, then we will start the reassembly process. We'll start mending these pages with Japanese paper with all of the fragments. All right, I've done four changes of these paper towels. And I'm gonna remove the granite. Now have a look at this cover. Here's our little envelope with our fragments. I'm gonna set that aside for a moment. So I wanna see this cover. Now this is still damp, but I thought you'd appreciate a view of it. You do wanna be very careful here at this stage. If we missed any of that adhesive, we could get some adhesion to our holly text, so we want to be very careful. This is where a bone folder comes in handy. But I found a ruler can be a good proxy for a bone folder. Let's see how this page is behaving. This is just a tiny bit of adhesion because of the methyl cellulose that we used. And I'm, I'm comfortable with that on that page. Now I do know this here is loose, by the way. I don't, that tiny amount of adhesion may be enough to pull these pieces off of the paper. So I do wanna be careful in those areas. Like I said, this is already loose. And it's gonna stay there, that's fine. Let's see if we can just get our micro spatula under it. There we go. Get that piece. This is now free. separate here as well. I'm going to get this out of the way as well. What I'd like to do see if I can't remove oh this is this is between the holly text and the paper towel we have a little bit of adhesion. All right, so we have some paper towel out of the way. Now what I'd like to do, I think, is try to leave this page flat and see if we can remove the holly text. Hmm. So we didn't have tape there, and I believe that this adhesion is from the methyl cellulose. So I'm going to use some water to get it to release. So we're going to continue to blot this anyway. Again, this adhesion is not from the tape adhesive, but from our methyl cellulose. Okay. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restack these with new Holitex.
I do not want to put paper towel directly on here because if there is any methylcellulose that's acting as a little bit of a glue here, I do not want it to cause adhesion between this page and the paper towel. So I'm going to put some fresh Holitex on there. We're going to continue with pressure. Initial thoughts here is I'm thrilled. I think this color is really well preserved and we knocked out a lot of the staining on this side down here before we were looking at darker than off-white I believe we can go back and check the the record and up here we were definitely looking at almost tan here we were straight brown and I think we haven't affected that stain too much we brought it down maybe to the tan level so I'm very happy with that we have very good color here. Minimal loss of probably some intensity, but for the trade-off here, I'm very happy. The white over here is now clearly white. And we got a lot of filth out of this page. We removed the adhesive from the other side. Um, this methyl cellulose we use to reinforce and strengthen the paper. This will be relatively easy to deal with. The other thing of note is that we had a whole bunch of bleed through here. It was so much red bleed through on this side. We've eliminated most of it. We have a little bit here associated, I think, with the drying process of pulling some of the inks through this surface as we dried it. So I do think this page is going to benefit from me wetting it completely one more time. So I'm going to do that as part of my drying process here. But this page is ready to go into my press. And you've seen that before where I have long-term storage in my big Masterpiece 350 seal press. So I'm going to go ahead and put this page right in there. I will look at these fragments a little bit later. I need to be more careful even than I was with this with removing the Holitex. So if there's any adhesion at all between these paid, between these um, pieces of paper, they're so thin, they're so fragile that uh, I really want to be very careful. So I may use a solvent or I may re-wet this before pulling this apart because again this was super high priority for us to save so I'm going to be very careful with this so I'm going to set this aside for a moment I'm going to put that other page the uh, back cover in my masterpiece 350 press and then I'm going to re-wet this page and get some holytex under it and um, try to get this to dry where the water's being drawn out through the other side. And the trick to that is typically waters in these, in these stacks is, is dealing with two forces, right? So it's being pulled by capillary action and it's also being pulled by gravity. So when you make your stack, like we dried this, this face up. And it's typical that you have gravity pulling down and then you have capillary action pulling in both directions, but the bottom paper towel will get saturated first. Once that one's saturated, most of your fluid is going to be going up and into the top paper towel. As that one becomes saturated, it the, the solvent, which is just water in this case, is pulling some inks with it and it will actually pull from this uh, obverse here to the versa. And so this is manageable usually. And I think re-wetting this page will help with this situation. And again, we have some methyl cellulose here that's just a little bit acting as an adhesive. So we want to re-wet for that reason anyway. So we'll do that next. And until next time, take care of one another.